cool well welcome everyone welcome in um today is another uh lovely dev platform uh i'm sorry data platform <laughs> let's start it again let's let's all right cut <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll edit the we'll, we'll edit this part out <laughs> hey welcome everyone <laughs> to another data platform community meeting uh, I'm joined with Vlad and Tiffany from uh, Pagoda. They're going to go over uh, data, um, <laughs> data platform things. Uh, we're going to we're going to be talking about uh, just kind of recap on why indexers are important, uh, the relationship between the indexer framework and Lake framework. Um, also going to be chatting about Lake framework for Python, uh, and also go over more of the enhanced API features that we uh, kind of discussed a little bit last time. Um, so yeah, cool. uh, yeah. any time. Thanks, John. That's all. We, we can stop it here. <laughs> <You're> <laughs> That's it. All, 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 all the cool stuff. <laughs> um, <laughs> thanks, everyone. Tune in next time. Um, yeah. <laughs> If, uh, yeah, again, uh, same format as always, if you're new, um, just drop a question in chat, um, drop uh, um, or, or, or the Q&A. We actually prefer the Q&A button, but if you don't want to do that, you want to do the chat, that's fine too. Uh, but yeah, drop a question at any point in time and we'll answer them either uh, as they come or we'll find a, a moment to, to, to answer it uh, um, during the presentation or afterwards. Um, so yeah, uh, Tiffany, are you, do you presenting uh, a slide or yeah. slides? Cool, awesome. Yeah, yeah take it away. Uh, so yeah, so like what Josh mentioned, we have a couple of items. Uh, the only one that was added basically is the alerts uh, demo. Uh, and we actually just released the alerts internally with a couple of add-on feature from the last demo. So, you know, looking forward to that. Um, and without further ado, I'll pass the mic to Fro to discuss more on indexers. Yeah, hey everybody. I hope you haven't forgot about the indexers, but for those who are just new to the ecosystem, I decided to actually remind everybody uh, where we are standing and what is the indexer. And thanks for the question in the chat. I saw what indexer is, so it's the right time to answer this question once again. And you can find all the docs. I, I love the docs. They, they are very... Um, uh, uh, friendly and, and also covers all things in details, but uh, I will try to recap and just uh, bring some essence uh, to the table today. Uh, so essentially, when I'll start with the problem uh, that you can, may, may face. So the blockchain is, is quite a um, um, isolated environment and it, it doesn't want to share their data. It, it actually doesn't, doesn't need to do it. So the, the only purpose of the blockchain is that is to actually proceed with uh, um, decentralized consensus being done and moving forward from like block to block, including some changes uh, from different parties and arriving to the next and like iteration of the data uh, view um, so all the ecosystem is on the same page, basically. Uh, and indexers are the tools that uh, and like approach or like idea that basically uh, is, is, is very simple. You just need to know what those changes are. And the blockchain itself is not very friendly to do so. So we actually start, like when we were facing this problem uh, as the explorer team initially, uh, we needed some way to um, record all the changes in the blockchain into our positive database in order to then uh, efficiently serve them through Explore UI. Uh, so let's uh, let's move to the next slide, uh, and I, I'd I'd like to um, present you with like how Indexers ecosystem looks like. Um, you can, you can basically, from the high level, I would divide, divide them into two pieces. Like first, the tooling that we are talking, like the, the term of indexer is a bit overloaded by this time, because sometimes people refer as an index indexer as something like a, just a tool, like a, a library or a helper to implement things. Uh, but other at other times, uh, people refer to some specific indexer uh, that was implemented with that tooling. Uh, that does something. 
So on the tooling side, we have we currently have basically two of them. Um, it's the indexer framework and lake framework. Uh, I will dive into details uh, a little bit in the next slide, but for now, let's just re remember those and go through the uh, various implementations. I just want to highlight a few. There are, by, by this time, we have probably a couple of dozens of indexers uh, that I, I'm aware of. I decided to start with some like very, very old ones. So near indexer for Explorer was pro like was the second um, um, indexer that we built. The very actually it was third, uh, but the the very first for Explorer was not really like a proper indexer. I would say it was very hacky solution there. Uh, so the very first indexer was actually for wallet. Uh, but the, uh, from there, we actually iterated and implemented the whole indexer for explore for all the needs uh, to have all the data in the blockchain dumped into the pod database. Um, and the from there, once we tested it ourselves, we were uh, happy to actually share our uh, tooling uh, in the form of indexer framework and the very first community implementation was Plux Capacitor, uh, at least from what I know, uh, they built the, the indexer that allows you to selectively uh, put some of the blockchain events into MongoDB uh, and then run from there. So it was powering Mintbase and a few other uh, solutions out there. Uh, it's, it's all, it was also great. Uh, and since the time we evolved and like we, we did a lot of experiments and we we, we always fa uh, uh, felt like it's we wanted to make the indexers much slimmer and smaller but the initial indexer framework implementation didn't allow us to do so uh, and uh, because you you need to run the full uh, near core node and it's it's uh, it's not as heavy as like Bitcoin node or ethereum node uh, but it still uh, has quite uh, uh, high high bar requirements uh, to the to the um, storage specifically. So we require uh, near core node requires SSD uh, performance storage and a lot of that. Uh, so if you want to have something like all blockchain data uh, indexed, you need archival node data uh, on your server, and it's terabytes of that in uh, sitting on SSD. So without further ado, we actually implemented this near lake indexer, which is very simple uh, idea. We, we put all the blockchain data that we collected through indexer framework uh, to uh, S3, AWS S3 solution. And from that point, there was a whole family of new indexers based on this lake framework. Um, we call them just near index, near dash indexer dash something uh, on our GitHub so you can find at least six implementations by this time, uh, which do like index events, um, account balances, um, FTs, and stuff like that, basically. Uh, so let's uh, switch to the third slide, uh, to the next slide. Uh, and uh, I will, I'd, I'd like to give you a comparison of like how things actually uh, fit together. So both of the approaches of indexer framework and lake framework allow allows you like the basic baseline is to actually follow all the blocks and transactions in the near, near protocol. So that's strong yes on both sides. Though lake framework is a centralized solution, uh, as you can see from the second line, uh, which affects the the fact that you basically. Either you need to run your own uh, lake indexer, which is open source, and you can do, do so just as fine. Uh, but if you use our um, like Pagoda offered um, data uh, buckets, you are limited to uh, mainnet and testnet networks because we only run lake indexer for those. Uh, but the the benefit is enormous, and we saw like cost infrastructure uh, dropping like 99% uh, from over a couple of thousand uh, USD down to a couple of uh, bucks, like 20, 50 bucks 
uh, for the whole like infrastructure, uh, which is a huge improvement on that side. Um, also, ISO maintenance for the indexer framework, you need to follow all the near core releases. We had a new release just today, and by Monday, you, you're going to be uh, updated on if you run indexer framework on mainnet. Uh, on the lake side, you don't need to do anything. Like if you have your indexer uh, running, it will just run just fine for you because we will update our indexer lake uh, um, implementation, which dumps all the data onto S3 and all the like upgrades will be uh, so just zero downtime and like no downtime at all. Um, but and, and then when it comes to starting you know your indexer it um or essentially bootstrapping it it takes you days to sync uh with mainnet and testnet sometimes uh on the leg side you just spawn it and it's immediately there it, it reads the data uh, from s3 storage um local development is also cannot be uh, easier than it is with lake because you can run the nodes you don't need heavy uh, heavy uh, hardware requirements uh as the near core has however for a local net um, indexer framework is totally fine it's it's not like the the empty near network is super lightweight and it's not that hard to do but if you depend on some network state uh that would be a bit challenging and well, the um, the requirement that uh, indexer framework imposes to you on you being the solution based on top of near core is that it's only available in Rust, uh, which we love, uh, but we saw that as a limitation to, for some people. Um, so if you are into um, using Python, JavaScript, uh, or any other programming language, you would be out of luck with indexer framework sort of by design and while on the lake framework side your by design can use any programming language which can do http calls because you just need to communicate over http with this s3 uh, buckets so and this is the teaser over here you oh well josh already spoiled it uh, but we never talked previously about Python implementation of uh, Lake Framework, but actually that's what we want to uh, mention today, that we have uh, the implementation sitting there. It's even published on PyPy and you can run with it. Uh, we are still um, uh, testing it and like uh, fixing some uh, potential bugs. We, don't, we are not aware of any yet. We, we, we believe that it's quite stable, but there are some um, glitches of the network that could still cause some issues which we need to battle test uh, further. So far, it is quite stable, um, at least on par with JavaScript version, I believe. Uh, yeah, and uh, we encourage the community to build other uh, lake frameworks. So I I can only say that it's just a couple of, uh, well, not, not a couple of hundreds, but uh, maybe a thousand of lines of code, basically, um, that JavaScript and Python implementation took uh, to get us there. Um, so you can contribute your own um, implementation to the community of Lake Frameworks and um, maintain it. You don't need to be officially Pagoda, Near, or whatever. It's, uh, it's a community effort. Uh, and that's, yeah, and the reason I'm not even talking about the specifics is that it is just as any other um, framework implementation, this client, as in Rust or JavaScript, uh, we have tutorials on our indexer uh, or near-indexers.io website, so you can find uh, NFT tutorial uh, in JavaScript and uh, Python. Um, we, we actually don't have one in Rust yet uh, because we believe we have other uh, tutorials in Rust that just similar. Um, so we can find all the tutorials on the website. And 
Yeah, it's it's those will be just as familiar as the previous uh, like frameworks uh, if you've seen them. Cool. I think that's all from the like uh, from the indexers landscape, uh, and I, I I'd like to pass the word to Tiffany. Yeah. Um. Thank you, Paul. And I think there are a couple of questions or um or things in the chat. Do you want to address them first or? Just may I ask you to? Um, yeah, yeah, I can go over them. Um, one question is, is there any chance of Near Lake using Machina as a target for data? Yes, so the very, like, um, first day Machina is uh, launched, we will be there for sure. Like, it's it's definitely the, the direction we, we want to explore, though. Um, still, we, we, it's it's not on lake or indexers or blocker. It's it's very straightforward to actually run with it. Cool. Um, could you provide some details on how you come about the twenty dollar month fee for using Near Lake? Yeah, sure. So the 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 major cost there is from AWS S three storage. So we configured our uh, buckets in the way that the requester pays uh, for the usage. And the, in order to listen to all the blocks that are coming, and so they, they, they are, that are stored on S3, we estimated how much get requests, uh, get, get object requests, and how much uh, uh, list objects requests uh, we would need uh, to serve to S3 from S3. Uh, and our estimate is it's uh, 20 bucks. You can find all the details in, in the readme. Uh, there is like a very nice breakdown. Uh, and the, from the terms of the uh, node requirement, like the, the actual instance that would run your, in, uh, your indexer, um, with, you, you can even use some free instances out there, which are like less than, uh, 500 uh, megabyte of RAM and shared CPU power, that would be just fine and just enough for reg like to follow the network. If you need to, to do some complicated uh, evaluation along the way, definitely would need a heavier machine. Um, but uh, yeah, it, it could cost you a couple of bucks a month or a bit more, but it, it's definitely not in the realm of the requirements uh, near core node would uh, force you to have. So, yeah. Cool. Uh, yeah, and thanks Bobby, for um, posting those resources as well. Uh, links in the bottom. Yeah, we'll make sure we'll add those to the YouTube video when we upload it. Um, a follow-up question to that is, is there um, a time where in the future where we might be able to pay that fee with USN? Oh yeah, so the the future direction uh, gradates towards that we will actually uh, repackage that into Pagoda uh, Dev Console, and we will reduce the cost even further, and uh, the billing will go through uh, the console, and it's probably gonna be much cheaper because the ecosystem will grow and reuse the same resources, so we, we will need to hit. AWS uh, as much, and we will cut uh, a lot of costs on on the shared resource, basically. Um, yeah. One quick question I have on that actually um, is we we are discussing you know enable payment with USN um, with uh, within the teams, and one question I have is uh, you know because enabling recurring payment with crypto is is like a very unsolved question within the industry, and sometimes you know maybe. People don't really like having recurring payment with crypto with access key and all of that. So just a quick like feedback getting, uh, do you guys mind of if it's not recurring and you get a notification and you pay for it with USN or with crypto? Um, so really welcome, really welcome uh, chats and just, you know, let me know if that's okay, then, you know, that that's just like a, a really great. Cool. Awesome. Yeah, thanks. Um, in addition to JSON, are there any plans on supporting Protobuf as output? 
as output of what? Sorry, um, Marius, can you clarify that question, please? Yeah, could you follow up that uh, data? <laughs> Too generic. Uh, so let let me unpack it here. So uh, indexer uh, um, uh, near lake indexer uh, reads the data from the indexer framework from the blockchain basically and uh, packages it into JSON and stores those JSON files for about blocks and chunks uh, on S S3. And then any of those languages that implement those framework like client libraries can read it from S3 and read the JSON and uh, repackage that into native programming language um, objects uh, to work with. And we, so far, we didn't plan to use anything um, else because the JSON file just worked for us. Uh, I would love to hear why you believe like protovops could be better. Cool. Uh, is there a business model to monetize data with Lake? Yeah, I can speak with, uh, to that. So um, we don't have uh, the immediate plan to monetize at the moment, but it is it is part of the plan to um, you know, just like what Fro mentioned, right now you need to go on S3 and, you know, pay there and uh, and all of that. So we're we're actually hoping to making that process easier with a whole Pagoda or like near account uh, on Dev Console and enable everything from there. And you can manage your billing or all the services that you interact with the Pagoda products there. Um, and we're planning on offering, you know, even like a better pricing for it um so it should be even cheaper and you know we hope to enable crypto payment like usn so that's even more convenient so yes there there is a plan to monetize but the model is not set but it, you know we, we definitely hope or like at least a goal is to make it just easier better and cheaper for for all of you cool awesome uh, I think that's the end of the questions that we have so far. Oh, whoop, I think uh, one more. Are you going to disable the direct data consuming from AWS S3 after billing on Dev Console? No, we don't. Like it's, it, I think it's it's fair to keep the um, sort of S3 access open, uh, and we have all the current tooling using the data. Um, but the the idea is basically that we can provide much better tooling and um, even cost efficient um, solutions. Uh, so I think it, it, I, like it, it will just eventually converge to the, using Pagoda instead of direct AWS access would be just better basically in, in all aspects. We can provide you with some monitoring so if we, if we, for just for example, if we would see that your indexer is not making queries to us, we can alert you and say like, hey, probably something wrong with your indexer. I, I, I'm as a developer, I would love to have all those like nice features um, built for me so I don't need to, you know, worry about monitoring uh, of my indexer. So features like that could, could be very beneficial. And, we will definitely consider to implement those. Cool. Oh, yeah. awesome. Okay, um, moving on to the next slide, which is the next topic is the API landscape. So um, some conversations we've been having is, you know, there's too many places do you can, you know, interact or consume uh, primitive data from a blockchain. Um, and there are a lot of, there are a lot of things that we would hope our, our RPC uh, calls will be able to achieve or, you know, just make everything easier or better or like, you know, easy to consume or interact. Um, so we create, we introduced the Enhanced API Suite last time and we identify a lot of the primitive data needs sort of uh, will require like if you're a regular RPC, archival RPC, you have your customer pipeline to grab like a bunch of data from a bunch of places like prices and here and there. And you need, and now with our enhanced API, it kind of, you know, maybe adds to a, this landscape even to make it more confusing. But 
So as a result, we're actually going to um, change this by offering this Pagoda API suites all together, which by, by the user experience perspective, it basically means we're going to give you a one-stop shop of all of this kind of API most uh, common or needed necessary needs on their data um, and you know, interact with the blockchain with the RPC uh, with one endpoint. So it's going to be something like API Pagoda testnet or mainnet. Um, we'll, we'll release that name once we really fit, fit, uh, figure out our finalize, but it should be one endpoint um, that enables access to all of this. Um, and we're actually working on together with Ro here also um, to provide, to, to unify our regular RPC and our cover RPC access. So you no, no longer need to you know, have like, oh, like this five app hooks, I poke, poke here. And after that, you know, for prior and all, you know, history data, I need to poke the, the iCover node. So we're going to all offer them all in under one endpoint. Um, so yeah, that is the landscape change that we're very excited to bring you. Um, and other than that, for enhanced API, we're, so the first batch last time, uh, Olga introduced that um, we're working on a couple of balances um, and, Right now, we're working on supporting legacy tokens, and you know, and a lot of a lot of to make sure that our offering is is complete and is as helpful to the ecosystem as much as possible without you know the extra custom work uh, that needs to be done. And for the future batches, we are going to offer, like I mentioned, um, the price APIs and combined price with you know guest spend with like transaction value and a lot of those to give you even more and better information. Um, on the amount you spend. Um, and then we'll, we'll also want to have a more detailed breakdown on account and contract states. So, you know, right now uh, there you know, returns a lot of a huge strain from the RPC call on accounts and contract state. We hope to break them further down so that you can, it's easier to, for you to consume and you, know, you don't need to manage or process that afterwards yourself. Um, we are looking to provide more information account, about account and transaction history Given the long history of our blockchain and amount of data, there, there needs to be some sort of creative solution, but that is definitely in discussion. And we, we definitely understand that this is a very important um, data need from the community. And we also is planning on, we're also planning on support, uh, supporting logs or traces. So it's helped you, you know, easier debug. And we are thinking if it, it can be, you know, connected to other tools or calls to, uh, to make that, you know, the whole unified debugging uh, process easier for, for you all. So yeah, that's the plan for Enhanced API. We really welcome more suggestions or like, you know, or uh, helping us prioritize what to support next. It's a, it's a lot that we want to work on, uh, want to provide. So really welcome all the feedbacks that we can get from this. And I see a question in the chat. Uh, I think it's more of a more of a comment. Yeah, uh, it was Pagoda Super API. <laughs> uh, and yeah, it's just it to be for 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 a premium uh, price. Yeah, so um, so that is that is a uh, that like not really for Super API as a price, um, but we do have a plan to uh, start monetize um, on on this front. But uh, we'll start with the regular RPC, um, and you know the RPC. Yeah, it's a spoiler alert. So RPC is, uh, it's, I think a couple of people probably already know. Um, and, you know, we're, we're have to, we have the plan to um, gradually, you know, supporting better RPC experiences, but, you know, it, but also from our perspective, we're, we're starting to create a monetization model for it. Um, we'll have more information about it gradually and more, but as a, as, a, as a result of that charging, we definitely also want to promise a better service, a better experience and more powerful um, functionality. So yeah, that's a spoiler alerts, but it will, you will still have the free endpoint access until then. So no worries about that. Um, and then we'll have more information done. Cool. Awesome. Thank you. And next topic is actually going to be alerts demo that we uh, talked about a little bit. I'm gonna cool. go over to this site here. So I'm already logged in. Uh, for anyone who don't have a Pagoda account, you know what? Yeah, for anyone who don't have a Pagoda account, it should be very easy to, I'm just gonna log out and redo it. <laughs> so um, uh, am I sharing? I'm still sharing the screen, right? Yep, yeah. Okay, cool. 
Um, so yeah, if you log into your Dev Console um, and this is you, if you don't have an account or you know you can sign up easily, I already have my account, so I well I just just connect with GitHub. It's just easier um, for me to do that. And I have an alerts test project that I created, and there are a couple of tabs right here. Um, well. First of all, very selfishly, <laughs> uh, we actually embed it near Lake into Dev Console too. So you have the indexer tab on in, within Dev Console um, that you can just you know look at all the introduction that Fro just talk about for the value proposition on Lake. You know how powerful it is and how easy to use, and you will have like the you know couple of links um, that you can just directly go into the most helpful uh, examples and. Um, and like try out near like go ahead directly. Um, and for an analytics tab, you uh, we'll probably talk about it before in other meetings, but you can um, also add your contracts within uh, within this, for example, I can try, you know, for us, go marketplace. Confirm, oh, it's not. Okay, I actually don't remember what it is, but you basically, yeah, you can you can add your contract here, and then you will show up uh, a con uh, analytics tab of your contract, um, how it's performing and everything. But that's not the point of this demo. The point of this demo is actually um, demoing about alerts. So I actually have alerts set up for successful transaction. I'm just gonna delete this because I was testing it. Um, so let's pretend that doesn't happen. Uh, so how you do is it's very easy. It's just like, you know, hit create a new alerts. You go into alerts uh, target address. I'll put mine in case anyone wants to send me more to token on testnet. Um, so select, select condition. We actually now, and from the last demo, we, uh, we actually have a lot more supporting this time. Uh, we enabled event locked uh, on, on top of this alerts. And we also enabled account balance change and account balance change by percentage. Um, so all of these <coughs> are, sorry, uh, all of these are the newly supported feature that we worked really hard to support on, you know, all the way from having more indexers to support this from the back end, all the way to, you know, enable this from the front end, the easier way um, for the simplicity. And, you know, I just don't have, it's a, it's account, uh, account address. So I don't have a lot of things to, um, to be able to demo here. So I just used the simplest one on successful transaction. And I'll enable this by adding a destination. So this is also very easy. You have a webhook or you have a telegram um, select and you can easily enable this by just you know, scan a QR code or just directly open the app. Um, you open your telegram and it will just pop up, uh, which I think, can anyone see this telegram bot? Yep. Cool, okay. Um, so yeah, so you can just, you know, there's this Dev Console Dev bot is going to pop up and, you know, you are going to get your alerts from here. Um, so I'll just enable this destination, I'll create alerts. What I'm going to do next is go on a testnet wallet. This is like the Tiffany testnet three account. Um, and anyone want free testnet tokens? <laughs> Submit their uh, addresses. If not, I'm just going to send it to Pro. Okay. Hey, Ben. Uh, I'm giving you, I only have six here. I'm giving you three. I'm very generous. You know that? <laughs> uh, and Benjamin Testnet. Okay. Send. I'm giving you half my tokens. Uh, and <coughs> sending. Excuse me. I keep coughing. Okay. Awesome. So it is processed here. Um, let's look at the bots and see if it's actually um, responding. Yay, okay, it caught popping up. You have successful transactions here. Yay, triggered. And we have, the reason it's popping up multiple times is because you know there are a couple of processing that, um, that's happening there. So each of them refer to actually different receipts. Um, so you can look into the details of your transaction. But yeah, so that's pretty much the alerts demo. Uh, and definitely go in there, try out. We're going to have a public release. Um, we're gonna have a public release, uh, you know, starting next week on, you know, and you know, it, it will be a, a available for all the users on top of Dev Console. Um, so this is a spoiler alert. Um, so whoever is here, you know, you have the first see, first view of the new alerts uh, and that we're gonna support. So okay, going forward, um, last slide I have here <laughs> is. Pagoda user survey. So 
our, our de developer uh, designer team actually created this survey um, and they, you know, Corvin, our, our uh, designer actually created a, a forum post so that everyone can actually look at why we want to uh, design, why we want to do the survey and what we want to know about uh, from you guys. We really value the feedbacks and, uh, and suggestions and uh, all of your experiences. The survey is actually very simple and easy. So just go in and there are only like, you know, couple of questions. Um, it's enabled with a Google, Google form. Um, so, you know, you can just, you know, you can just answer this question selectively and really value that. It's going to be super, super helpful for us to really structure uh, Pagoda products forward. Um, and it, this is really, you know, going to be affecting across different products offerings. So we really welcome all the feedbacks and um, participation here. So we'll, we'll share the links. Um, I'll actually post them, all of them right now in the chat. And we'll also share the links after the call um, in other areas and places. And that's all for our presentation. And I see one question about, can we log in with near accounts who can go to Def Console? Um, yeah, so that is a great feedback. We actually uh, have been getting that feedback from a couple of people and we're, we're working on enabling anonymous uh, login to Def Console. And we have actually created a GitHub um, discussion about this. So we'll love more discussion and um, follow up on uh, the status that we are going to have there. Um, I'm gonna find that right now. Cool. Um, yeah, any other questions, please feel free to drop them in the Q&A section. Um, yeah, is that is that all the uh, uh, pre, uh, all the items that we're going to be presenting today? You're still sharing your screen, uh, by the yeah. way, Tiffany. <laughs> Sorry, I was trying to find that we'll, repo. We'll edit out your personal email stuff in post. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm really trying to find that repo. No problem. But yeah, if you have any questions, please drop them in the chat. Um, we'll give it a give it a minute or so to see if anybody else has any follow up questions before we conclude. Yeah, no, no exciting stuff. A lot of a lot of cool things coming coming down the coming down the pipe. Uh, any chance of having docs in Spanish? Um, yeah, we do have like a crowd in. Uh, I'm I'm not sure about near indexer, but I know on uh, docs.near.org we do have a crowd in uh, translation uh, feature that um, community members have been helping translate. Um, but yeah, definitely, yeah, please, please open up a PR. Would love to hear, have um, some more community contributions uh, uh, for translating uh, our documentation. Yeah. My, my Spanish is on, on the level of uh, no, uh, um, noble español. Yeah. Uh, which means <laughs> I, don't speak in, I don't speak Spanish. Um, like <laughs> Yeah, Dev, the the folks on DevRel, like we have five individuals that speak fluent Spanish. Um, so yeah, uh, hop into office hours if you if you speak Spanish and wanna uh, and wanna talk natively. Um, yeah, there there's a bunch of us that um, are are definitely fluent in that language, and um, yeah, could definitely help um, with uh, any PRs that you have. Um, are there any problems for Near Lake Framework Assembler? Yeah, a lot of problems. It's too low level. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Any, 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 any other questions? Da, 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 da. Cool. I, I, I think we did it. I think. I think uh, I think we answered all the questions that you have. Yeah, and if you have any follow-up questions, please, uh, yeah, come hang out at office hours. Um, we'll upload this to YouTube. We'll also have uh, links for feedback um, that you can participate in. in uh... <laughs> When's the airdrop, sir? <laughs> uh, yes. Uh, and... <laughs> Uh, yeah, um, other than that, thank you so much, Tiffany and Froll, uh, for another great data platform uh, meeting. Yeah, and it, yeah, it I great. think next month, what's that? Yeah, I, I, I was just saying that it's it's a great opportunity to actually uh, talk with Spox and uh, 
learn yeah. more. So please reach out even if, if you are just uh, watching it as a recording. Uh, we are always present in the communities all, all over the places. And if, if we suddenly miss something, the Vral team will definitely help us uh, to, uh, like, to, to be brought to the right discussion and help you out so um i'm i'm excited to see more and more projects um building on top of uh, all the tools that our our team is working on i am it, it's always a pleasure to to see the your success folks so uh go community <laughs> yeah absolutely go community and go team <laughs> all right have a good day everyone we'll see you next time yeah, see you.